Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. Steve, today, very interesting <laughs> podcast. I'm not even really sure what to call it other than maybe the end of an era. Yeah. Because today, being the 400th podcast, is also my last podcast. I know. Which Tell is, which sad. is, you know, I think a um, few people in the industry knew that I, um, you know, that Tony and I had, had stepped down from the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wanted to, and we'll get into that. Yep. And I think we'll we'll use this as a bit of an opportunity. I think Matt's got some stuff queued up as well too to go through some of the highlights and slash lowlights of the of the company. Um, so here we are sitting, and it's funny because I know these podcasts come out a little bit behind, um, and we've actually done a bit of a bank to sort of you know get us through. But yeah. um, you know we're we're sort of twenty mid mid twenty. Mid twenty twenty three, and we started doing uh, these podcasts in twenty fifteen, if I remember correctly. But it's we'll, twenty fifteen, twenty third of February, twenty third of February. Yeah, Steve, your memory's like that. It was just on the screen. Oh, I was just on the screen. <laughs> okay, it was on the screen. Right. <laughs> but um, so so Steve, yes, we, mate, it's been a long journey. It's massive. We've had a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, there's been some great moments. There's been some. Bad moments. Yeah. I mean, like there's been some really sad stuff that's happened as well too. Yeah. Um, but I've absolutely loved being a part of the podcast, mm. and and I think you know, where, where do you want to start? Because I mean, like, why? So Tony and I are obviously not just stepping down from the ATP project. We're, we're stepping down from ATP Science, and a lot of people are going to go. So why? Yeah. You know what's going on? What's happened? Um, and we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. Or we'll get to, to to the why. I, I think we should start with 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 the comp- bit a bit of comp- just a bit of the company history because okay. there'd be people after four hundred episodes didn't listen to the first one. Sure, maybe, 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 maybe they want to. Maybe they're here for a bit of gossip. Maybe they're here for a bit of a, the inside scoop. Well, I, I guess. And look for, for for those of you who know Steve and I and, and know the company and know you know where we came from. I, I guess you know maybe we should go right back. Mm. Um, you know. Uh, prob- probably where I started from was that I was mm. always passionate about sport mm. and I knew not a great deal about nutrition. Mum, yeah. Scottish, you know, haggis, you know, just like, you know, knew nothing. Um, dad was born in 1923. Yeah. So he brought up in a, in a boarding school, you know, served in the Second World War, was mm. just charged, sent home to die. You know, it was just... Mm. But the, what I mean by that is that there wasn't much education. There wasn't a, a very good understanding of nutrition and, and all the rest of it. Um, long story short, got into sport mm. um, and uh, nearly died. Um, drank yeah. like an absolute fish. So yeah. I was completely unhealthy. Um, I lived on two minute noodles and alcohol. I used to yes. I used to live with a, a, a bunch of mates of mine uh, in Woodridge, yeah. and um, and we used to. I used to save up all of my money. I used to work at Maya at the Sporting Edge, and um, I'm not kidding. You remember that, anyway? Um, and uh, I, mum and dad went back to New Zealand when I was 18, so I sort of went on my own. Mm. And literally, my and I'm, this is not really much of a. There's not much embellishment here. Mm. I, I lived on two minute noodles and saved as much of my money as possible to go out to ladies' night, which was on Wednesday nights. Right? <laughs> I know. It's pathetic. I was pathetic. Ladies' night. Ladies' nights. Thursday night uni student nights. All my mates were uni students. Yeah. Actually, one of my mates ended up becoming a um, uh, 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 engineer and, and, and worked for NASA. Um, what, did oh. he, what did he study? I forget what he studied. It was basically rocket science. It was bloody brilliant. Aeronautical um, engineer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and worked on, on um, GPS, satellite, you know, all that wow. sort of stuff as well. Too. It's super cool. Uh, my other, my, one of my mates who got busted for smoking – Marijuana and all the rest of it ended up in the federal police. Oh. I'm, I'm kidding you not. Like, you say in, in federal court. No, no, no federal, federal, federal police. police. And oh, I mean, um, yeah, Brad, one of my other mates, went over to the states and and very successful in IT and all the rest of it. Good. So we started off just bumps, yeah, like really. And um, I just drank and nearly drank myself to death. Like mm. I was a classic binge drinker. Um, and and I wound up in hospital. I remember feeling sick one day when I was at work. And uh, I I went to hospital and man I thought mm. I was just I felt terrible went to Logan Hospital which is literally yeah, just down the road three hundred meters from where we are now wow. and I remember getting wheeled into the operating theater thinking man I could die yeah and I was twenty I'm going to say I was twenty yeah and I thought right if I get out of this I'm going to I'm going to change my life wow and um 
Long story short, uh, I did. I nearly died. Yeah. I got an infection. I had to go back in for a second surgery. Jeez. Um, but it, it, it brought me to one of those points where I went, well, this is just stupid. So I came out of there. I went in, and I was doing a bit of gym and that sort of stuff, mm. but seriously, like, mm. didn't really know what I was doing. Went in at 90 kilos. I came out at 64 kilos, oh, right? I was skin and bone. And you're tall. This is for people who are listening. You're, yeah. you're a tall man. You're six foot four. Six foot three, so oh, yeah. so yeah, I, yeah. Or six foot two. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, I think in terms of um, that was a massive wake up call. So mm. I started to get interested in health. So very shortly after that, I just started training. Um, I, I started to learn more about eating, mm-hmm. and that started me down the track of of wanting to to mm. to get better. Anyway, uh, very very long story um, short. Um, after Tony and I got married, mm. um. We nearly got bankrupted because we, we were at work. I was working as a project manager yeah. in in um, in the cattle industry. Came back and and went, what the crap am I going to do? Yeah, I remember actually sitting there going and, and watching a bloody the planes flying into the twin towers just oh, after we 2001, had two thousand one. Yeah, yep. Um, uh, just after we'd come back and just going, I don't know what to do. So it took three thousand dollars from Tony's mum's credit card. Oh, okay. And, and opened up a, a, I'm not kidding, smaller than this boardroom, uh, uh, about a three metre by four metre room um, down at Springwood Gym here in Queensland. Um, it was called, it was, it's called Lifestyles now. And that was this tiny little sweat box yeah. that faced west in the car park <laughs> and um, opened up a, a little supplement store, started buying uh, Optimum mm-hmm. and, and uh, Masashi. Max's, Masashi. Yeah. Those were all the big brands yep. back then, right? So- um, and started selling it. The first week that I was open, um, I got a call from the, the landlord going, hey, Jeff, I don't want to alarm you, but I've just come um, you know, to the gym and there was a side window that went into a pool that sort of, and he goes, that window's open, mate. Did you leave it open? And I said, no, I didn't. So I rushed down there. What had happened is somebody had come, clum- climbed over the, the fence into the pool area yeah. and then had climbed up onto a window and had opened the window and had got in and had stolen about, I don't know, about half of my stuff, oh, like probably no. more, to be honest. Had a little bit of stuff on tick, yeah. but most of it I'd paid for. So, I, I, you know, it would have bankrupted me, yes. right? I had a cover note. That was all I had. I had a, I rang up, had a cover. They covered me. Oh. If they hadn't have covered me, yeah. I would have absolutely been yeah. gone. Gone, yeah. So that was in two, May of 2002 we opened that store. From 2002 through to about 2010, uh, grew the company um, to I think about – the the pinnacle was around about um, three quarters of a million dollars a month in sales from the it's website and from coming in, which is massive, right? Yeah. Two hundred fifty thousand through the door. But I became very despondent with all of the artificial sweeteners, yeah. all the stuff. I started learning a lot, and, and and you know it was all about aesthetics and bodybuilders and working with athletes and all the rest of it. Mm. But the more that I studied around Ace K, the more that I understand mm. about um, you know synthetic colors and flavors and all the rest of it, I fell out of love. I literally I just went I, from 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 one moment going, this is this is great, love this business, mm. um, looking to franchise. Actually, mm. I, I did franchise it to one of my staff members who who then completely screwed me over, turned up with lawyers and, 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 and oh, man, I, I don't want to tell you the oh. heartbreak over that. But I tell you, I mean, like in terms of heartbreak, yeah. I had, had a manager that stole $160,000 out of me um, on, on the year that I started ATP Science because I, I yeah. started focusing on, on ATP, and I'll, yep. I'll get to where we get to that in a minute. But um, so had, in that year, yeah. we, we had a website um, that we custom built. Yeah. Um, actually, another company that I won't mention, um, it was supposed to have an exclusive because we put all the bells and whistles into that website. This is way back in 2004, yeah. 2005. It was a great website mm-hmm. and they sold it to a, to a major competitor who became one of the most major competitors in the industry. And at they're that still time. around now? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. Nice. Guy. I, I don't actually have a problem. I actually ended up selling him stuff with ATP Science. Okay. So, and, and the thing is, is that that wasn't his fault. That was the company that I was yeah. dealing with, right? Mm. But um, uh, yeah. Actually, it was Mr. Supplement, and, and he's a nice oh, guy. Yeah. So it's and 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 he was he was he was just you know we became friendly. So yeah. like there was no harm on his fault. But we created a website. They then sold the template. They took all of our our ideas and sold it to him. So he became our major competitor. But 
as the business went through, we um, so we decided to go with one website. We should have gone with Magento because back in the time before Shopify and all the rest of it, that was the gold standard. Magento, right. We didn't. We went with this other one because they said, oh, we're going to give match you dollar for dollar. We're going to give yep. you bells and whistles. You're going to be the global standard. And the, and the website completely failed. We went from the first page of, of Google to about the eighth page. They, the guys that were implementing it did nothing. I was Tony and I were overseas in Fiji at the time when they did it. We uh-huh. said that it had to be done at the um, beginning, um, around the middle of December, because that's typically a very quiet period. Yeah. So it gave us the ability. We had to be here, you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm. The site had to be back. They didn't do any of that. Sure. So it absolutely tanked the business. Just as we were opening ATP Science, yeah. just as this other guy was stealing money from us. Uh. Um, so the whole thing just completely collapsed. Tony and I sold the business. Um, what with ATP Science, while well, we just got that up, we, we put $60,000 into ATP Science. Mm. Um, this is in about 2012. Mm-hmm. And we were paying all of the staff out of out of T- TSD, which is the name of the, the company that we had. Can we say the name of it? Yeah, the supplement then. Yeah, I so didn't know. TSD, you. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It was about $300,000 because I looked at it the other day. We, the business loaned about $300,000 to ATP to yep. pay staff and yep. you know, all the rest of it. And then we ended up selling the business and Tony and I still owed $400,000 after we'd sold everything. So oh it was $400,000 in debt oh. with a fledgling business yeah. just been ripped off by one of somebody that I trusted literally with employed his family yep. and, and just, you know, and just sat there and just went, holy snipe. Actually had bankruptcy papers going, how am I going to get out of this? And, and, and it, starting a business, and I hate to say this statistically, they normally fail. They do, so, yeah. You know, yeah. they're just normal. Most businesses fail. Yeah. Um, so so this was this was about 2012, I think it was, or around then, 2013. I think it was right at the beginning of 2013. And we're just sitting there just going, we're not going to make it through. And, and I think I've told the story before, but Tony came to me one day and said, Jeff, we, we don't have enough money to pay wages and to, to pay the rent. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, how much money do you need? And I think she said, she needs like $3,500 or something like that. And I'm like, oh. so I jumped online and I played a, a, a poker tournament online and I won five grand. It was only a little one, but still, that's what kept, the, like, it was literally that close to- I didn't know if you were going to say that story. To collapsing. Yeah. It was so, so close. So it was absolute touch and go. But we started the business because we genuinely wanted to create products that worked. We yeah. wanted to make sure that they're properly dosed. And I know a lot of companies say that, and that's mm. a lot of horse crap. Mm. Most companies do, they say it mm. because they would sell their grandmother to make a buck. Now, yeah. there are some great companies out there that absolutely do. Yeah. But how do you separate the wheat from the chaff? It's very difficult to, to, to know, right? It is difficult. I mean, you know, when I look at bottles and that sort of thing, and also we've got to talk about this, but but is what's on the label in the bottle? Yeah, well, you that's know, it. That's a that's a question that we need to think, but it it's very difficult to and, and it could even be with regards to the certificate of analysis yeah. where you get the ingredients from as well too. But anyway, look, the, the idea was is that it had to be safe for my son and safe for my mum and that I, I wanted athletes to use it and we just had a very earnest idea of what we wanted to create. And we really worked hard on creating good value for the retailers because mm. at that stage, the margins were okay, but not great. Mm. And I think we were one of the first companies in Australia to come in and, and, and give really decent margins because we were we were working on relatively thin margins ourselves. Mm. Anyway, long story short, um, in, in 2012, we incorporated the company and by 20... Mm. 15, 2016, we were starting to win awards. I think we yeah. won. We even beat Optimum Nutrition as brand of the year. Right. Uh, Nutrition Warehouse, I think, was the the premier sort of – and Massive Joe's as well mm. too were the premier sort of awards yeah. that you wanted. Sure. And, um, yeah, we actually beat Optimum Nutrition. Well, now, for those that don't know Optimum Nutrition, they're a global juggernaut Huge. owned by Glambia. And um, – and we actually beat them one year. And I think the next year we came runner-up. Wow. Um, which, you know, very, very proud of that. We yeah. won male product of the year, female product of the year. We won, um, like, so many things that we did were, were really different, were yeah. iconic. When we came into the industry as well, too, um, people were largely selling proteins and pre-workouts were obviously starting to, to, to rise. But we gave them things like um, Cord RX, which is yeah. an adrenal product, which we I actually did a deal with Simon Rees from ASN. Hey. And this is one of those moments. It's like, oh, you know, is this going to work? Do yeah. people going to understand it? Yeah. Why should you look after your adrenals? And especially when we're selling into the sports industry. And Simon goes, oh, yeah, Jeff, I'll, I'll take it on, but I want an exclusive. I think he said he wanted an exclusive for six months. Right. So we we're like, well, we were nobody. Yeah. So I said, okay, mate, if you're going to support it, that'd be great. So anyway, he took it on. 
And they blew up with it. They absolutely blew up. They were selling everyone that was coming in, especially when they were saying that their pre-workout wasn't working. Mm. Um, the guys at ASM were selling them some Quad RX and they were getting excellent results because obviously their adrenals were, were fried, right? Yes. They, they were taking too many um, stims and, and, they, and there was no recovery. There was no um, restitution for their adrenals, Steve. Yeah, you know what bodybuilders are like. They're nuts. They, they just want the more, more of more. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I've got to ask you a question without notice. Um, speaking of pre-workouts, you at the start contracted someone to make a pre-workout, didn't you? Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> well you know where I'm going. I, I do. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll come back to that. Well, what, I was, what I was going to say, though, with Simon is that, oh, yeah, that it blew up, right? Yeah. So it was going crazy. Yeah. And I was just getting – and we were starting to improve as a brand. People yeah. were starting to say, hey, well, hang on a minute. Why has he got this exclusive and why can't yeah. we have it? So I had to go back to Simon and say – so after about three months, Simon, can I buy back the next three months exclusive for you? And he was very gracious. And he yeah. said, Jeff, no worries. Just give me a sweetheart deal going forward and, yeah. and you know, sell it off. Because he understood as well too, right? Yeah. I was just getting hammered. And Court became one of our most successful products. That was later banned and has now become adrenal. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into the whole TGA issue in a minute. As Can't well wait. Too. Well, that's fun. Um <laughs> But yeah, we did. I mean, and, and this is the thing as well too. When we, we didn't manufacture ourselves when we started, we actually were manufacturing overseas. And there's two stories. We we're manufacturing with a company. I can't mention the name. Mm -hmm. um, very, very popular back in the mid 20, 2010s, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And they were manufacturing a lot of people's products here as well too. First issue was the, how do we had a product called infrared and, and we had it manufactured overseas and they were importing it. Uh, we were importing it. I got the product. We'd waited months for it. We got the product, opened it up, and straight away there was a really strange smell. Mm. It was um, I can't I can't really describe it. Quite a a, a sweet smell. Yeah. I, I don't know how to. You know, anyway, so I and took the a product scoop. Contained sugar. Man, uh, yeah, yeah, it's got sugar and, and, and you know I yeah. didn't have honey then. No, they're um, but you know you know it had a bit of alanine and all this mm. sort of stuff. Anyway, sh shook it up and drank it. Now, I never get headaches, and I think I, I boast about that all the time. Yeah. Within about, oh, I don't know, less than five minutes, I had a horrible headache on either side. Ooh. So I actually uh, rang up Matt at the time and said, Matt, you know, what's going on? He goes, that doesn't sound right. He goes, no. Jeff, do me a favor. And um, and, and Matt was the formulator um, and, and a partner at the time. He said, open up, open up the lid, have a look on the inside, and um, see – if there's any burnt plastic. I'm like, why would there be burnt yeah. plastic? And he goes, well, typically when you're putting a, a, a seal on, yeah. what happens is they, they use heat to seal mm. the, the lid. Yep. Anyway, I opened it up. Sure enough, it nearly cut my finger. It was all burnt and melted and had and it actually um, melted parts of the plastic. So what had happened, Steve? Yes. Formaldehyde. So yeah. as the plastic had released, the formaldehyde had infused into oh. the powder. So I rang them up. And I even re re recalled their calls. Now, they're in the US. We're on the bones of our ass, mm. right? We had no money left, and I couldn't sell this stuff. Yeah. And they go, oh, look, send it back to us, or we'll pick it up, no cost to you. We'll aerate it, get rid of the formaldehyde, and send it back to you. I'm just like, no mm. way are you going mm. to do that. You need, or you're going to dump the stuff, you're going to mm. make a fresh batch, and you're going to send it over here. Now, Jimmy was his name. He was actually a really nice guy, but his yeah. boss was – tyrant yeah and um mate i am pulling out i'm going to sue you yeah. i said i'm yeah. going to go and all the rest of it because at the end of it thank god they my bluff pulled off but they made a fresh batch and sent it over that would have been the best death of the business that would again. have been death that would have been we would have died on that as well too because you can't sell formaldehyde now formaldehyde's a, a toxin that causes cancer it's what you preserve bodies in it's a trichlorinated hydrocarbon. It's disgusting. I remember poisons. sharing I remember sharing this story at the time and what was great for us and I didn't actually realise it is that a lot of people went, geez guys, a lot of companies would have just aerated that and repackaged it and sure. sold it. Um and they said and that got us a lot of fans by doing the right thing. Which we would always do the right thing, right? Yeah. Sometimes it costs you. Yeah. Um but anyway, that that was that was another one, and and the second one that you're talking about is that I. It's <laughs> my favourite story. I was, I was one day I was yeah, we, we'd we'd launched a product called Limitless, which was a uh, a fat burner made by the same company overseas because we sorted out the relationship. They'd yep. done the right thing, so yep. we're like, okay, great. Anyway, um, I, I got a call from um, Fizans. Uh, actually, it was Queensland Health. Yes, they gave me a call, and I, I remember sitting in the car park, and uh, she said, "Oh." Um, hi Jeff. Um, 
such and such from Queensland Health. Just want to let you know that we've conducted a recent um, uh, study on pre-workouts here in Australia. We've just gotten, we've collected 50 different pre-workouts mm-hmm. and we have tested them. And I, I regret to inform you that your product has tested pot- positive for amphetamines. Now, <laughs> I... <laughs> I just went, I mean, like everything I stand against, right? Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. Here, And this is the thing, right? This is the thing you don't know that manufacturers are doing. Now, yeah. is that people would take it, they'd get a freaking great result. Yes. They'd feel, thank you very much. Yes. And then they would continue to buy that product. Very and much so. And it's cheap yep. and it works and, yep. you know. Um, anyway, I just died. I thought, I'm going to jail. Well, yeah, I said, selling I better, amphetamines. I better shave my it's legs. It's a prescription and, drug. Yeah. Well, you know, I just thought, you know, this is this is not going to be pretty. Yeah. Um, and I said, okay, what what are next steps? And she said, um, um, she said, well, the the product needs to be, um, you know, deleted, and you know, we need to ensure you know safety for the public. Mm. Obviously, the amounts were below a certain threshold because there was no recall. Yeah. And I had actually said, look, and this was honest as well too, we had actually just about sold out and we weren't going to, we were going to actually start manufacturing here in Australia. Right. Um, and we did. I think we went down to uh, Toy and Christine and we were we were sort of manufacturing with them. Right. Um, uh, that's um, uh, not international, uh, prestige, um, prestige anyway. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to bring it back in house. This is before we started manufacturing ourselves. Yeah. And, um, that was probably one of the worst moments because I was just Ooh. like, "Oh my god!" Like, I, I had no idea. You're right? Selling amphetamine of the fifty of the fifty, and this is the interesting thing, yeah. right? This is the thing about Astra- uh, Australian products versus US products. Yeah. Um, of the fifty that they tested, she said about half failed. Oh my goodness! About half. Oh. And I asked her. I said, "Was that predominantly US?" She says, "All US." Right. So obviously, this company was probably making the lion's share of products that were coming into Australia, right? right? So they were loading it up with, with amphetamines. And so, getting, you, you know, we, we, when you take amphetamines, I don't think I've ever taken amphetamines consciously. No. But I, I, I imagine you'd feel amazing. Yeah. You know, you would. Yeah. So we, um, anyway, we got past that, started yeah. manufacturing everything ourselves, opened up our own facility, um, you know, grew grew there, and mm. then you know, come to, I think, twenty nineteen. Um, mm. we, we were just flying. Um, mm. we had a lot of support from retailers, and you know, thank you if any of you retailers are listening because we really appreciated the support. So four years ago, you're on top of the world, top of the world, and then um, got a phone phone call from uh, the TGA, and what. I, I don't want to belabor this point, but what it had basically happened is because of the podcast, because we were talking about all of the attributes of the product, they'd ping the podcast as, um, and they changed the, the legislation where podcasts were considered to be part of advertising, which makes oh, sense, yeah. right? Um, and so the podcast basically was in breach of the advertising guidelines. Mm. A lot of the claims that we're making on the product were deemed to be and were therapeutic. Mm. So what happened at that point is we received a three hundred thousand dollar fine. Our website was shut down um, as well too, mm. which was. Making about, I, I, I don't know if I should really disclose it, but it was a lot of money mm. um, per month. It was shut down to zero, mm. uh, and we lost all of our major brands: Alpha Mars, number one test booster uh, yeah. in the market. Uh, we lost Cord RX. Uh, we lost T four three two. All of our products, we, we, they, they were deemed to be therapeutic. So therefore, yeah. unless they were registered as an OST. Uh, L, we could not actually sell those products. Yeah, um, to, Matt and I actually flew down with our lawyer to meet with um, the TGA in Canberra because we were threatened with, um, uh, I think it was 18 months in jail, uh, $10 million company fine and about a $1.5 million personal fine. Jesus. And I I look around now and, and again, I understand there's no point in complaining when you Mm. get pinged by police if you're doing 110. Yeah. What really frustrated me and made me very upset and angry uh, and disillusioned um, in a way it was seeing a crap ton of people doing 160 with no helmet on. Correct. Yeah, that was, and, yeah. And, and just going, well, well, why us? But we had probably one of the largest voices, I think, at that time. Mm. Um, we we had, I think, the number one podcast in health. Uh, yeah. It was us and Pete Evans, I think. Pete Evans was of, number yeah. two. Yeah. 
and I think we changed. Yeah. So, um, but you know that that was good, and um, and I think they 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 were doing it to make an example. Now, obviously, uh, we respected their laws, um, we respected the, the what had happened, but that really hurt, and it really put us back on our haunches. So, horrendously so. Yeah. Now, now, if something else happened in 2019, what was that? Well, that's interesting. That was uh, <laughs> that was the event 201, which kicked off just before um, COVID, obviously, yeah. which hit as well too. So, yeah. so if you can imagine the business at that time, we we're flying high, mm. we had won, we we're winning all these mm. awards, we we're mm. doing really, really well, we were innovating. Not everything that we did was was brilliant, but I'll come back to I think probably one of our most successful launches and one of our best products. I think uh, I know when you're talking. We'll come back to that in a yeah. minute. Um. We'd finished in the BRW, which is a business review weekly, Fast 100. We'd finished 13. And all of a sudden, we just got inundated with calls for investment. Mm. What I wanted to do with the business was to create a, a marquee f- factory to mm. be able to do manufacturing, not just for ourselves, but for other people as well too, where everything was based on integrity. Mm. Um, focus on um, exporting internationally. <laughs> it sounds like uh, we really should make a network documentary of this, but we oh, lost yeah. our F. FDA our export license at the same time, and we even had the the FD um, the FDA audit come out here, and they said, "Yeah, everything's fine. You just need to change these things," and they weren't changed, and so we lost our our ability to export. Now, normally that would take about twelve weeks to rectify, yeah, but that happened right in the middle of COVID, yes, and so something that should have taken twelve weeks took over eighteen months, right? Well, COVID stopped at, the, at the same time as we lost all of our marquee brand names yep. at the same time. Now we were talking with Bodybuilding.com. Uh, vitamin shop in the United States as mm-hmm. well too. Um, I had had conversations with iHerb. Um, and, and once you get into the American market on major platforms like that, it improves your visibility and that would open up the rest of the globe. Of course. That all collapsed. Yeah. So so we, we got we got um we had the fine and, and we and we had the, the run on with the TGA, which again we were wrong. They were right. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, based on the laws we we were in breach. Um we had COVID. Mm-hmm. which obviously shut down things. We lost all of our marquee brand names at mm-hmm. the same time. And and and, and we just broke ground on this facility. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you just at the same process yeah. of building a massive factory. Ma- massive factory. You yeah. Know, um fifteen million dollars alone for here plus ten million dollars in equipment as well too on the bar line. Yeah. Um yeah, it was just it was just horrendous, right? It's like that that movie in nineteen ninety one, The Perfect Storm. Yeah. It was like just all these factors came to this this yeah, and, and, and look, there were other ones as well too. I remember we invested about oh, about half a million dollars into expanding into the US. Yeah. Um, actually, it was a, a mutual friend that, yeah. and this is where you know these people, man, you got to watch them. Holy yeah. cow! And he was a complete fraud. fraud. He, yeah. he took all of our money. He he was producing bogus reports. Uh, we had some stock over there. He sold the stock, refused to give it back. Um, you know, it, it was just disgusting, right? Yeah. Anyway, you know, he, he's ended up bankrupt, believe it or not. It's funny, I, I seem to have this effect on on people that have a really, you know, come after me. Yeah. Like even that other guy that stole 160K from me at the other business ended up basically homeless and just, you know, I, I don't wish any oh, bad on these people, but I you kind of go, you know, you, you reap what you sow, right? Yeah, of course. But um, anyway, so... So long story short is that 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 really really hurt and and yeah. we had finances at that time that obviously helped the the business because we just run smack bang into a into a brick wall yeah um, massive massive yeah. brick wall now through all that we we're still doing podcasts yeah um, and through all that we're still you know the day to day operation was still going of well there are a lot of businesses that d- had a lot t- tougher than us so I don't want people to go, oh, oh yeah. you know because a lot of businesses closed. Yeah. A lot of the businesses that we were dealing with, about a third of them, um, the retail stores, um, a, a lot of them closed during that period and some never reopened. Um, oh, I've got a you know, The people who... down in Melbourne, I mean, they got absolutely oh. just oh, – I just feel so bad for them, right? I mean, oh. it was just absolutely you know, horrendous. I'm going to Melbourne next week for holidays, see my family. Now, so I'm from Melbourne, boy. Yeah. And, um, you know, my – um, businesses down there that that uh, were in a big shopping centre that were very successful. Yeah, the shopping centre is very vacant now. Yeah, you know the big shopping centre I grew up in. You know that sort of area. Even my mother wasn't allowed to leave her house for for months. You know, only allowed outside for what it was. It was catastrophic. So business would have been horrifically. You know, affected. We got off track. So got off track. Um, coming back onto it, Steve. So yeah. I think in terms of. Um, where the company is now, because a lot of people are saying, how's A to be doing it? Yeah. Really, really well. Yeah. We changed. We obviously, one of the the, the, the major projects that I was fo- focusing on, what I focused on was the bars. Mm. Now, I always wanted to create something that um, didn't have a laundry list of ingredients, 
was as natural as I could possibly make it. And why collagen over whey protein? Mm. Collagen doesn't denature. And so you can cook with it and, and it's still good. And we use body balance, which is the best form of collagen that you can use for building muscle mm-hmm. tissue and increasing lean body mass and even decreasing body fat yeah. because it increases mTOR and PIPA, which yeah. helps with building muscle and decreasing body fat. It's excellent for uh, recovery. Most people, when they think of collagen, they think hair, skin and ass because that's mainly what yes. it's been marketed for. But uh, anyway, I, I guess as part of my legacy is concerned, we, we, we started several years ago with this, yeah. but we finally got to the gel bars and there's some really cool oh, new flavors yeah. coming there. Uh, Woolworths and Coles have got it. We've been speaking with um, other l- very large retailers. In fact, nice. some overseas have seen this as well too, which is kind of cool. Mm. Um, we've got yes, the mellow yes. bars. Yeah, we've got marshmallow and we've got the, the gel bars. And then we've got the jewel layer bars, yeah. which are coming I out really one. soon. Well, and they're my, they're my absolute yeah, favorite. I think that, I mean, and if you like the texture and all the rest of it, and again, uh, good for my eight or my 80 year old, like, you know, they're, they're, they're no artificial colors or flavors. And I'm very proud of those bars. That and they, the, the, the bars are pumping here. Seriously. Mm. The, the guys are working long hours. They're, they're pumping those bars and they're going great. Well, there's two shifts, isn't there? Or there was. Yeah. I think they're doing double shifts. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. Look, like, the whole idea of that was to obviously give people through grocery something that they could use and introduce them to the brand. Right. And then we've got our sports end of our mm. range. And then we've got our practitioner and our yeah. gut health range, Ooh, range which we yeah. come to in a minute. Love that. But uh, what comes next? Well, after I'm left, we've also got a new pre-workout coming out, which I'm pretty pretty happy with. I can't wait for that one. Um, it tastes really good. Yeah. We've really focused on the taste. Steve, we formulated that. Yeah, I know. That's why I can't and, wait for it. And um, it's good. And, yeah, it's really good. And it's got a good amount of caffeine, but not too much. No. It's got really nice um, nootropic ingredients as well, too. Um can we mention the name of it we, yet? We can, is... If we don't mention the name, we can sort of talk about what it does. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so, let's talk about what it does. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, that'll come out, I think, in the second half of this year. Mm. And um, the big thing for me is it had to be natural. No artificial colors or yep. flavors. Um, most of the, 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 the sweeteners that you use are very bad for you, which we've said in multiple podcasts. So yeah. if you do like the caffeine before you train, you want something, a bit of English walnut in there as well too, which I really like the way that that makes you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it is actually English walnut yeah. uh, as opposed to some geranium some, yeah, stem. No. Um, it's in the one extract too, so quite potent. Give it a try. It, yeah. It'll be coming out. As I said, after I'm gone, but I'll be watching from the sidelines, cheering that one on. You'll be having I'll that be, one, won't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. But it's what's kind of funny though is that, to be honest, I actually am really getting to the point now where I actually don't like caffeine as much. <sighs> I, I'm actually using more of the Max Lift because I don't oh, actually yeah. – because, you know, you want the stuff that helps you to train, but yeah. I actually don't like – I actually value – Sleep, and I find if I have, if I train in the afternoons, which often I do, oh, you do yeah. not as much as I should. As Tony's given me a kick in the ass the other day, it's because <laughs> uh, it's just been so stressful. Um, yeah. I've actually got out of a lot of my rhythms and routines. Mm. I'll talk about that in a minute too. But um, um, yeah, I don't want the caffeine. Yeah. But if I'm going to train in the morning, yeah. if I need to pick me up, yeah. then the new one that's coming absolutely. Well, this is the old one. Yeah, and um, I love it. All right, yeah. Stevo. Yeah. So where we are now, that's what's about to come. But yes, Tony yeah. and I have stepped down. But let's go back, mate. Let's talk about some of the great things that we did. Oh, so, yeah, the Matt, you mentioned the first podcast that we did was in what's that date? On your, on your sheet down there. Oh, okay. I think it's the twenty third of February. Do you want to do you want to just play us a little bit why, on that? So why? we'll go right back to where we first started, Steve. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is the welcome to the ATP project. This is episode one. I'm your host, Jeff Doidge, and in today's episode, Matt and I discuss the three most popular fat loss ingredients on the market today, and if they're the real deal or if they're just hype. Also, while your thyroid gland may be the difference between the body that you have and the body that you want, insulin and its effect on fat loss and PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome, plus a whole lot more. Welcome to the ATP Project, delivering the irreverent truth about health, aging, performance, and looking good. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, ready to perform at your best, or somewhere in between, then sit back, relax, and open your mind as Jeff and Matt battle the status quo and discuss everything health-related that can make you better. There you go. You're so professional. I, I was expecting something more dodgy. Well, it, to me, it sounds stiff. And, and that's funny, right? Oh, yeah. Like, because when you first go, you just go, what, what are we going to do? Whereas we're far more conversational now, Steve. Yeah. Now, I prefer that myself now, just yeah. being conversational, right? And I appreciate some people prefer more of the, you know, 
very cut and dry, but yeah. uh, anyway, it, it's, no, like it's the, the evolution of the, pod, the podcast, right? And it's funny because you you, you look at the top um, five most popular podcasts on audio, and you know we've got two of the top five are sort of to do with weight loss. Yeah, well, that's always yeah. very popular, right? Yeah. And we knew that. I mean, the first episode we did was on fat loss because that yeah. is that is the most popular. People want to know what are the new hacks, what are the new mm. tricks? Is there a golden bullet? Is there something that I'm doing that I shouldn't that can make all the difference? So yeah. people are always going to be interested in that, that right? That's so amazing, and you know the, the the top podcast is on leptin and ghrelin, which is understanding the appetite. So people obviously have a passion for regulate because because that that's what it's all about you know what one of my favorite podcasts we did was and not not that i'm endorsing this product or anything but but it was on an injectable yeah um, semaglutamide which is the 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 injectable i won't mention the brand name that stops you eating yeah and it's like that's now the biggest selling drug and sold out in australia know. and you know and people know now yeah. a lot of people know that there are some really negative side effects but they don't care oh, they're still prepared cancer? to yeah and it's listed on the mind. website. It's not like, oh, I made that up. It's conspiracy theory. So, Matt, can you pull up the first episode with Steve-O in it? Because hey. I'd like to hear this. Steve-O, oh, you were just a young whippersnapper back oh, then. What, was, so what no, year was, still, was that? That was 20... Is this, is this, is this Steve? It's um, May of 2005. Is that, is that the first Steve podcast? Yeah. First mm. was he was a guest. Welcome to the ATP Project, delivering the irreverent truth about health, aging, performance, and looking good. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, ready to perform at your best, or somewhere in between, then sit back, relax, and open your mind as Jeff and Matt battle the status quo and discuss everything health-related that can make you better. It's Matthew Legg here today on the ATP Project interviewing Steve Eady. Steve is a good friend of mine and one of the smartest men I've ever met, nicknamed the Walking Encyclopedia. So I've talked to you up, Steve-O, but thank you for giving us your time today. Oh, no problem at all. I hope I can live up to that thought. <laughs> oh, too easy, mate. We'll make you look smart. Correct, yes. Uh, I run a college uh, on the Gold Coast and um, I also lecture around um, Australia in nutritional medicine. Um, I do. Uh, my master's was in actually insulin resistance. My PhD is in cardiovascular disease and diet, and that's almost completed now, so that's good news. Whew. Uh, before that, I was a naturopath many years ago. Uh, yeah, I did a degree in complementary medicine, and I've been teaching nutrition for the last... So, Steve, that was your first podcast, so that was done by phone. I, I'm pretty sure the first one was by phone, wow. and then I came in uh, one, well, for a one-off one, and um, yeah, it was great. I so when, when did you come on stuff with us, Steve? What year was it? I'm going to say it was 2016-ish. 2016? Oh, oh have, you, have you got a cheat sheet there, Matt? Jeez. How do you... Episode 93 was when you became a host. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. So yeah, that was, uh, oh, it was probably 2016, 17, yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's a long time ago. So it was so, it, Logan, you know, in that yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Had, we had a lot of fun. So in terms Sorry. of, I think, some of the most pivotal and key moments, yeah. Steve, there's been a few. Yes. But one of one of my favorite launches and one of my favorite products ever mm. is Gut Right. Yeah. Now, there have been a lot of imitators. Mm. When we did this, there was a few gut health products in the marketplace, but nothing of any seriousness. Now, I said to Tony, Tony, let's go all out. Let's create. Let's create some really good marketing on this product, not because we just wanted hype, but because it was an unusual product. Yeah. It tasted pretty terrible. The yeah. first iteration of Gut Right when it came out literally tasted like a wet dog smells. Yeah, it was, it was horrible. Disgusting. Um, anyway, we got it to a point where it was less horrible, and even for those wussies that still hated Gut Right, we created Gut Right Daily, yeah. which removed one or two of the ingredients that were really bad, and yeah. we put some some sweetener in there. And even my boys will sort of drink that as a oh, as a reason, especially the chocolate. It's, it's quite yeah, reasonably it's nice. nice. And look, I, I had a I had one the other day, a, a raspberry one or a cranberry one. I can't remember because we, we had cranberry for a while, and it was actually really quite nice. It's quite yeah. palatable. Yeah. But um, Tony created some animation. I created some lyrics, and you created some music. <sighs> yes, so. Oh, this this launch, this got over 2 million downloads before it was taken <laughs> down, right? So it was huge, and it was kind of a lot of bit of fun. And what's funny is I can actually remember the song. Even to this day, I can remember the song. Yes. So, um, all right, anyway, Matt, do you want to play it and we'll 
So, it, guys, if you're if you're watching, uh, if you're listening, uh, it's kind of fun. But if you're watching, if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see the animation that we've done at the same time as well too. That Tony did. So, Tony, anyway, go good. for it. G'day, guys. How you going? Oh, oh, Steve. Steve. What happened to you? <sighs> Stupid designers lost my original file, haven't they? Oh man, I was going to say you look different, but mate, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Oh, oh man. Oh. You look green. Oh. Stop. In the name of love? No. Hammer time. No. Stop. Collaborate and listen. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. ATP's back with its brand new invention. Something to grab a hold of you tightly. Go to the bathroom daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. Turn off the lights, it might glow. To the extreme, I rot the john like a vandal. Light a match or a lovely scent of candle. Dance, rush to the toilet and boom. I'm killing the parasites with poisonous mushroom. Deadly, little scoop, met a melody. You killing these bugs should be a felony. Love it or leave it, you better make way. Go to the toilet, gut bugs won't stay. If there was a problem, your whiff solved it. Check out the sounds while the gut right dissolves it. Gut, gut right, right, baby. baby. Gut, gut right, right, baby. baby. Clepsiella, no, you know, hydrogen sulfide, that, that's, uh, no, that could be mm, yeast. yeasty, yeah, that's yeast. You love this crap, don't you, Steve? Love it, live for it. <laughs> oh, oh, where's Mac gone? Well, hopefully he's going to get his gut right. Hey, you guys want to get your gut right too? That's terrible. That's I'm amazed I didn't get a Grammy for that one. Oh, Holy cow, Dana. Steve, that was bad. What but that, was... that got over two million downloads on YouTube. I, I think it, uh, it got taken off obviously because of um, uh, copyright infringement oh, on the music. Right. But um, that was a lot of fun, oh, and, yeah. and and we had a lot. We actually had a, a gut right seminar uh, that we did, which went really, really well, really well. And, and that was the beginning of the polyphenols and how things work. And what's what's amazing is the amount of feedback and the amount of results that we got with that product were absolutely brilliant uh, and then we saw the raft of copycatters and oh. this is the thing that made me spew um, there's quite a few that came out and they were just Steve-O on, on a scale of 1 to 10 they were rank they were they just were rank zeros because they, were, they, they, they you know when you copy a product you try and make it as good or better because you've got the, the product they, they didn't even make it hard no, they just, do you know what they do they go they put gut on it Yep. They, they ride on the tails of, of obviously, what we've done. Yeah. They'll make it taste better. Yeah. Uh, maybe make the price point maybe a little bit better. Spend a crap ton more marketing. Yeah. Put put some nice TNA on it, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean by tits and ass. Um, and and then and then just try and sell it based on on something else. Uh, it just it is the industry. Yeah. There's no point in, in in hating on it. It just is what it is. But every time you see it, I just want to slap myself on the forehead. Oh, but um, that was a lot of fun. That, that was that was that was fun. fun. And that was back in the good old days, if we can call them that, you know, the, yeah. the days that pre-COVID and pre-19 and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was. Incredible stuff, but but quite funny. I'm so sort of glad the singing was edited out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. But Matt, uh, Matt you, you'll do the original? All right, yeah, oh, cool. Dear. So Matt, Matt, hopefully we'll have the original one oh, goodness. With, with that in there. So, um, so Steve-O, yeah. I think um, – uh, one of my personally, one of my favourite moments as well too. And I actually, <laughs> this probably don't take this the wrong way. I don't think you were there. Um, oh. But as when we actually had a lot of the seminars that we did yeah. and a lot of the the trade shows that we did. Mm. Did you come with us down to Darling Harbour um, when we had a trade show down there? I can't I don't remember think Darling Harbour because because no. I remember. Um, uh, Brooklyn and oh, actually, um, I think I did. Brooklyn, was this the launch of Gut Right? Uh, no, this no. was this was. We went out for dinner, oh. and I think this is when in twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen, and mm. we won a whole heap of awards. No, I didn't go. That and way. Ed Grant, yeah. and and actually, it might have been a bit later than that. It might have been twenty eighteen, right? And and Brooko and Elsa, yeah. and we just went down, and we had all the reps with us as well too. Yeah. And, and we used to go out and celebrate after the the trade shows. I just remember laughing with Brooklyn specifically so hard. I, I still to this day just 
remember that so fondly because Brooklyn was one of, she's just a lovely girl yes. and she was so much fun and we were just laughing and having so much fun. We're helping a lot of people and just every day, like on a Sunday, I'd be like, I can't wait to get into work. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait to get in. Yeah. I couldn't wait to get the, the testimonials and the feedbacks. Mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to, to hear about how we were actually impacting people's lives and mm -hmm. getting into the R and D and all the rest of it. And it was fresh and it was fun mm -hmm. and it was exciting. And there was, it was just a great vibe. It was yeah. just so, everything that we were doing was just, just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, my, you know, I, I love doing these podcasts because I love talking about health. So, but, but it didn't compare to that. That, that would have been amazing. Those, that, doing these know. podcasts is the highlight of my week. Every week on Thursday morning, I get up and I'm like, can't wait, can't yeah. wait to get in there. Can't wait to, to do that. But, um, and, and look, actually it's probably a good opportunity now to talk about, um, my replacement. Oh yes. Which is Nicole, Nicole, uh, Nicole Brown. Now, Nicole uh, used to work for the company and was actually, mm. has done a few of the podcasts, Matt as well yeah, too. Yeah, she does. And, um, I remember doing one. She's great. She's smart. She's our sort of people. She's mm. down to earth. Mm. Um, you know, so she's going to be a, a, a great, a great it's going to be fun. Co-host with you, Steve-O, yeah. taking over. I know. In fact, look, I'd imagine that the intelligence of the podcast will probably go up a crap ton. So well, probably the – I was looking at the audio compared to video downloads and um, surprisingly, Jeff, we, we don't get as many video downloads because well, we're so good looking. Well, I was thinking I, about I that. Thought... I was thinking about that. It's not actually because we're we're not attractive anymore, Steve. <laughs> what did it come down to is that I think we, we cut our teeth on um, Spotify yeah. and, and, and Libsyn and all that sort of stuff. So we, we kind of – I, I, you know, I don't want to say this, but we're kind of a big deal on that note. Mm, but three point four million. We're a bigger deal. But anyway, yeah. all I was going to say is that that um, that uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're probably not missing out on much. But um, yeah, that's all right. So, so Steve-O, from yeah. we're from here, mate. We're from here. Well, you know, like going going forward, there's going to be Nicole here, which is going to be great, and we're going to try and continue the fun. She is a fun person. Yeah, too. she is. She's a brain, but she's a fun person too. So, so going forward, it'll be similar things. We'll talk about health topics. It'll be fun. We'll miss you though, because mm. the, the the personality and and your knowledge, like. You know, what, what always amazes me is the fact that, you know, you didn't do multiple degrees, but you know so much about the industry and about the products. You can say it, Steve. You're not half as dumb as you look. <laughs> I yeah, but I think, I think, well, that's probably the best way hey, to go. you've got qualifications well, I haven't got. Well, the interesting thing is, mate, is that when, when I first started this and when I started the supplement then back in 2002, and I already had probably the best part of, you know, I don't know, five or six years where I was just really interested in what mm. was going on. EAS was big back then, Bill oh, Phillips. I love that guy, right? Yeah. Like he was just at the cutting edge, over, overcharged for his supplements, oh my Lord. But like he was he was great. Um, but I just spent a long time trying to serve customers, trying mm. to work out. And and it was through and my, one of my, my major mentors in life in terms of everything and keep coming back to this is that Zig Ziglar, said, if, if you want to get where you want to get in life, you've got to help as many people to get where they want to go. Mm. And and that was it. It was just through service. It was just right. Uh, an athlete would come in, a footballer would come in, hey, I want to put on more muscle, hey, I want mm. to get stronger. And, and I would just research that. And I spent a lot of time on bodybuilding.com going through their glossaries, oh, going yeah. through their, their forums. Big Cat um, was one of the guys that you did a lot of writing. And I'd spent Big a lot of Cat. time. In, that was Yeah, he's called the Big Cat. Huh. Big Cat, that was his, it was, it was, um, huh. that was his sort of his, his, his name. But um, it's like his pen name. But he um, and, and all the magazines and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Same as Mick as well too. Mick yeah, Kelly, remember? To and being around bodybuilders and, and yeah. asking them, "Hey, what did you do? How did you do it?" Because you know, as you say, bodybuilders and and these sorts of athletes would there wouldn't be afraid to try stuff mm -hmm. and and they just experiment <laughs> on themselves to work out what was going. I'm not talking about steroids. I'm just talking about health, wellness, nutrition, yeah. protein. You know, all that sort of stuff. So oh, Mick Kelly, I used to talk to him about what he used to try in the nineties. You know, firstly, he'd buy it from a veterinary surgeon. Sure. So uh, that's always where you Horse start. Horse and hound. Yeah. Yep. You know, it was just you know dodgy. But but that sort of that that sort of you know expand the knowledge. Yep. You know, and 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 people experimenting is is amazing. Pushing the limits. Mm. You know, like there there are still bodies to the bodybuilders this very day who are just saying, okay, if you're taking a gram of testosterone, I'm going to take a gram and a half and be better. And and this is pushing the limit of what we know. Now, most of that's crazy, but. I mean, this is pushing the limit of, of, of human nutrition. I love it. It's, it's a fascinating area. It is. Well, and, and I guess that kind of brings us, you know, full circle in terms of, you know, where we are today. So yeah. why am I leaving and why and, and what am I going to do next? Because I, I know that a lot of people are probably going to want to know. So yeah. look, the thing is, is that 
Tony and I are still shareholders in the company. Mm. Um, we still love the company. Love you. Love you. Mm. You know, love love the team that's here as well too. There's been a lot of um, people leave. I, I, I think what happens with the company is that, um, especially when founders leave, there's a culture shift and a, and a change. Mm. And I think the company is is um, becoming um, a bit more sophisticated. Mm. I think the company. I mean, we've got some incredibly. Um, professional people that have come on board. Mm. I mean, Jeff Cockrell mm. um, was the CEO of Subway, and he came on to create um, that that structure and that relationship with Woolworths, Coles, mm. that sort of company. If that made sense, you know, Steve, you and I have always been about information, education, mm. and research, development, and podcasts. Right, mm. like mm. that's kind of what we do. Yeah, and I've had a great time doing it, but I recognise as well too that what I love and Tony loves more than anything else is we love the startup. We love being agile and nimble. Um, and it's kind of funny because we've done it a few times now and both companies that we, we've done have lasted for 10 years and then we have, um, for one reason or another, we've kind of moved on to the next thing. Yeah. So at the beginning of the year, Tony and I, we just felt like it was time. Yeah, We just felt like we needed something new and we needed something fresh. And it's not that... I don't love being on the podcast. It's mm. not that I'm not passionate about the products that we sell, specifically underrated products and like gut right, like <laughs> they're thinking oh. freaking. And, and look, if you're a practitioner and you're listening to this as well too, Steve-O, right, get a hold of Steve-O and get the clinical data yeah. on that. It's just absolutely wonderful. Phenomenal. But it's time for us to do something something different. Well, something ten, 10 years really is fresh. that, that, you know, with the college I and that was 10 years, with almost what, exactly. With what, sorry? Health Schools Australia. Yeah, right. That was 06 to 16, really. Yeah. So quite incredible. It, yeah. it just happened to be 10 years as well. Yeah, yeah. So quite amazing. You and know, look, it's 10 year cycles. We've we've built a we've built a pretty good team here. Mm. Um, we've got some we've got some new people in and, and a new culture, new direction. Um, and that's good. That's all with our blessing. I mean, that's yeah. all you know. Getting into coals, getting into wars, touching as many people as possible. Not the way you do, Steve. But oh, okay. But, but you know what I mean. Like, like we we want to we want to get in front of as many people as possible, and that means that the brand has to evolve. Yeah. Who moved my cheese is one of the best books I've ever ever that's read. That's a great book. And and people, if you haven't read it, you could read it in an afternoon. But basically, yeah. it means that nothing ever stays um, uh, in a vacuum. Nothing ever stays exactly as it is. It really doesn't. Things are changing all the time. And you have to adapt your approach to that. So after COVID. Mm. Online became very, very big. Um, stores changed, but also the access to people changed as well too. So mm. one of the things that ATP Science wanted to do was to to get in front of people and provide a solution for them, which would then build the the visibility of ATP a lot higher. So yeah. we do that with the podcast, obviously. Yep. But the second one with the bars mm. is that protein bars that taste like confectionery that are sold in Coles and Woolworths, people then get to know ATP Science. Mm. They then start looking at us. They come and they deal with us directly online. But they also then go out to the the health food stores, the the specialty stores, the ASNs, the nutrition warehouse, the elites, mm -hmm. the um, I'm going to forget it, uh, the boys over in WA as well too, uh, Muscle Works. Um, you know, you've got you've got all of them out mm -hmm. there, right? I mean, and and, and again, um, you, you've got Melon Lucky down in, in New South Wales. Um, you've got the Mass Mackay up in Mackay. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Mass up in Mackay, I should say. Like, there's so many, and this, and look, please forgive me if I'm not mentioning you, mm. because there's so many great stores out there that we've 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 dealt with. Um, they've all got their own personality and their own ways of doing things. But it's been a privilege and a pleasure to be able to work with these guys, and they are the experts. And one of the things that we always did is we always wanted to build a strong relationship with the retailers out there because they've got the relationship in the community. When you want to go in for advice, yeah, you can buy stuff online and that's great mm. don't get me wrong i mean obviously but it's that building that relationship and that trust mm. and we wanted to be a part of that so um yeah things obviously changed after covid but we wanted to keep that funnel of, of people coming through mm. and get new customers in, and that's why obviously we spent a lot of time effort and energy on the bars it wasn't just about creating a bar that bodybuilders and people could use to get more protein in which it was but it was actually introducing a whole new class of people to supplementation health wellness come into this podcast and learn about who we are and what we have to say about how they can improve themselves absolutely Stephen. now now speaking of podcasts what, what have you had any of this stuck out in your mind that you remember of the 400 that you've done i mean you know i've done close to well 300 or something <laughs> one of my favorite podcasts is really funny it was actually a really low rated one but it was with the guy who did the paddling up the river oh um, um, Bo. Bo. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Um, do, do you have any of that, Matt? Do you have that? 
That's a guy. That's a guy. That's right. Bo, Bo was great because because you know I got fascinated with the guy because he he lived about ninety kilometres from work at Monash in Melbourne, and he lived out in sort of rural Victoria. And I'm a Victorian, so I was semi interested. And he said, "Oh, you know, I drive in, you know, once every whatever." And he said, "One day I'm going to just walk in." And he walked in ninety kilometres to work mm. overnight. Took him two days, Jeez. and he got there. And it's like. Wow, what an amazing and, – and he slept on the side of the road and he, he didn't take anything with him, not even any water or anything, or and, you know, just found change on the side of the road, roundabouts. He was telling about how the roundabouts and everything falls off the side of your truck so you find things. In <laughs> yep. it. And, and yeah, the guy that paddled to work too, he paddled via Western Port Bay or something. You know, yeah, it was incredible. Um, the other ones I absolutely loved were the Ingredients podcast mm. as well too, specifically the pomegranate, probably one of my yeah. favourites. Um, I mean, even just recently, the garlic one. I mean, every time we do one on a herb or an yeah. ingredient, so that's my new favorite ingredient, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, the one on paprika was like, you know, where we did the different spices. The five so, spices. So, so on everything, I'm throwing paprika on everything now, yeah. right? Um, food is medicine whole thing as well, too. Like anytime mm. when we're talking about nature, anytime mm. when we're talking about, um, you know, spices or herbs, ashwagandha, turmeric, yeah. Um, and I know that a lot of people know these things, but when we do a deep dive, Steve, and you break down the science, I just go, man, my appreciation and love for these things goes to a whole new level. And I look at that and I know that we say nature knows best. We, I know that – and I, I get so frustrated. I get so frustrated with the state of the world. When large corporations work hand-in-hand hand with government and say – these things are no good for you. You can't use these ingredients. You can't use these compounds. I mean, mm. when we did Chinese wormwood, mm. oh my gosh, Artemis, Artemis, Artemis annua, annua yeah. unbelievable power. Yeah. yeah. But yet you can't patent it. Yeah. There's no money in it per se. Yeah. Uh, and this is what I'm passionate about. And, and, and eventually these things will get sidelined whether made redundant, you can't talk about them, they'll be underdosed or whatever it will ha have to be. I, I mean, again, I'm very cynical in terms of the way that I view the world because I, my, my fundamental belief is that money rules the world and that he who controls the money controls the information mm -hmm. and controls your life. And I yeah. think it's only getting more and more further down there. But I celebrate nature. I just love it. Yeah. I just love hearing about the benefits of, of of all of these compounds and how they can impact on people's lives. It's you know? amazing. The most popular podcast on um, YouTube, I've got the fees in front of me, is the one on Tonkat Ali. Right. Fantastic so Malaysian ginseng. Yeah. yeah, Malaysian ginseng. Yeah, it's just brilliant. I know that uh, Joe Rogan did one on, on Tonkat. I yes. knew that that blew up as well too, you know. So <laughs> and, and when you hear about amazing herbs like this, I mean, there's so much more to them than than what we thought. The, the ashwagandha one that we did oh, yeah. uh, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. That was unbelievable, Steve. That well, was so amazing. There was so much in that that I didn't know, yeah. right? Well, so. I always try and surprise you with them. But but the Tonkat Ali one, I mean, and the ashwagandha for that matter, ATP have sold products for over 10 years with those ingredients. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, oh, everyone, you know, it's on Joe Rogan and all this sort of stuff. You know, this is where ATP was was leading the way. Yeah. You know, as said, you know, you mentioned Court RX. That's got ashwagandha in it. And that's been out since, you know, over 10 years. Yep. Uh, you mentioned Alpha Mars, uh, yep. you know, and Alpha Jupiter now. Yeah. Those products have been out for over 10 years, and yeah. that has Tonkar Ali. Yeah. Apex has, alpha, you know, has, has Tonkar Ali. Yeah. So these herbs we've used for over 10 years, and, and that's what I love about the company, the innovation. Yeah. You know, the, the, for the first gut right. You know, we, we term it a mod biotic, and that's like nobody has ever come up with that term ever before. In fact, we, we, we made that up. I mm -hmm. think trademarked it or something. We have. Yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, because it's a – you know, modifying the gut microbiome, mm -hmm. incredible, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact of no flavors or sweeteners, I love that. Mm. It's like, you know, I had a, a meeting Tuesday morning with a bunch of naturopaths and it was the easiest conversation. Do you use sweeteners? No artificial sweeteners used in anything, anytime, ever. Right. What about colors? No artificial colors used in anything, anytime, ever. Wow. It's like, and they're just going, oh, that's easy. You know, oh, what about this? But no, that's got no artificial, ed. it's got no gluten, it's got no dairy. Yep. You know, it's like it's 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 great. Well, even the line that we manufacture here, we don't have any dairy no. on our lines. No. Now, typically, if you look at products and they say it's gluten free, and it's yeah. normally on the back, if you turn it over, it says manufactured on a line that may That's process right. this, that, and the next thing. Now, I'm not having a crack, but what I'm trying to say is our point of difference is that we've tried to 
hold an extremely high level and a high standard here in terms of what we do, what we put into our products and what we believe. And we always try and look after that. Now, yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and to our detriment at times because it costs us because obviously we could be running you know, other manufacturing processes and, and products and other people's products and, and, and making money out of that. Yeah. But we, we want to keep our lines clean. So you can make whey protein to the cows come home. Yeah. Literally. But I remember, um, you know, and also what I like about the podcast is, is we don't just talk products. Mm. Like one of my favorite podcasts doing was the one we did on weird fat loss without diet. Or that was stuff. fun. That, that was great. <laughs> Actually, I'd say that that's probably up there. And the, and the thing is after 400 podcasts and so much, yeah. like – uh, I call it ATP time. I mean, you know, didn't we do that last, you know, last month, Jeff, that was 18 months ago. And, and hang on, that was, you know, oh, we did that years and years ago, Jeff, that was two months ago. You know what I mean? Like just, you just lose track of time. But that was a really that fun, a fun podcast. One. That was a lot of fun. It's like screw your diet, screw your exercise. And we're, we're not about that. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're about – if someone says, what do you do to lose weight, we'd say diet and exercise. 100%. But the podcast was on nothing to do with diet and exercise. Yep. all about cheating. Yep. And, and I love that. It was yep. about, about cheating. We've done podcasts on fat loss, cheating with illicit drugs and, yep. you know, nothing to do with what we do here. It's totally opposite. But, we, you know, and again, they, they, those five top fat loss cheats – it uh, had nothing to do with any products. Even yeah. you mentioned just garlic. You know, we didn't have a garlic product. No. You know, it's like, sure, we have some with Tonkar Ali in it, but, sure. you know, we don't have one with um, paprika or no. anything like that in no. it. No. It's just we talked about but it. Food food be a medicine, medicine be a food. So, um, yeah, man, a lot of fun, a lot of good info. And, again, I, I hope people enjoy the, the have enjoyed the podcast. I mean, like 400 episodes, there's a lot of references, a lot of stuff that they can go back and wow. listen to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been – and some of the, the testimonials, I mean, it was really sad when we weren't able to continue to do the health chats like we used to because oh, yeah. I really enjoyed Helping those. People. Um, and, and, and they've been really good. I think we've, mm. we, we've, we've helped a lot. So if you've been a long-term listener, um, you know, thank you for mm. putting up with me. Um, so before we sign off, Steve, yes. anything else, Matt, anything else you want to cover? No, I think we've covered it. Yeah, I just was very interested to hear your favorite, but, but I'd like to thank you for the joy you've given me on these podcasts because we've had so much fun. We have. I'm having fun now. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think... Yeah. I think, as I said, I mean, Tony and I, we've been married since 1998. We've been in business since 1999. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, we, we, we sort of started our own business um, pretty much. Um, we're just looking for that that next thing. So, so I mean, if people want to stay, you know, in contact with me, look me up on LinkedIn. It's probably the oh, best yeah. thing to do. Uh, as I said, I'm still a shareholder in the company. I'm going to be absolutely barracking for the new pre-workout when it comes out. I'm super excited for the for the dual layer bars, which yeah. should hopefully be out. I'm hoping by Christmas. I, I don't know. Um, and yeah, Tony and I are going to do something that you'll see soon, but it'll be not in competition with ATP. It'll be it'll be something slightly different, but still in the in the in the in the it's still better for you. Let yeah. me put it that way. Okay. Still in that sort of space, yeah. but um, but yeah, it's been. And, and are you going to make a guest appearance back on a podcast going forward or not? I don't, I don't know. know. I yeah, don't yeah, know. yeah, I know. I, I, I don't, don't know either. I don't know. I don't know. Once, once Nicole's in here, you'll probably be like, "Who was that loser that used to <laughs> used to sit in her chair?" Um, but yeah, as I said, it's been it's been great. It's been over a decade. You know, it's just incredible. It's really amazing, isn't it? It's, it's four hundred episodes. Our, our time flies. So, two thousand fifteen, the twenty third of February is the first one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like. Do you, do you, and, you, and you remember the first one sitting around yeah, the, the single microphone? Well, we had a single silver microphone, and we and we both used to kind of lean forward, and it picked up every bit of noise, and the quality was bad. I think Tony on the first episode as well too, she was doing the editing, and I think she used to edit out all the ums and ahs and buts and oh. like everything. Like Matt obviously edits the podcast now, but it's far more conversational. Whereas back then it was very. Yeah, very rigid. Very rigid. But um, I still remember we sat downstairs at, at uh, Henry Street and uh, we're in the boardroom where we had a, a really solid marble mm. um, boardroom table and, and we were sort of sitting on there sort of doing it. And, and as I said, I think people have heard this before. We thought, oh, look, you know, we'll do this for a few PTs and maybe a few store owners, just sort of educate them on a little bit of stuff. 
we had no idea that we would become as popular with 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 everyday people. You know, three million four hundred and thirty two thousand one hundred and forty three downloads. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's nothing on Joe Rogan. He probably does that in a day. But in terms of a small Australian company. <laughs> you know, that was really just trying to bring something a little bit different. I mean, I'm pretty proud of that, you know, yeah. so it's great. And as I said, at the end of the day, it's all about helping people. So, yeah. but with that, I think um, it's time for me to say goodbye, you know, yeah. and, and really appreciate um, you, Matt, and you, Steve. It's been absolutely thanks, brilliant. Mate. We've had it's a lot of fun. fun. And, um, yeah, thanks for everyone. <clears throat> I'm not getting teary. It's just. Oh, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> um, but thanks for everyone for listening. Um, you know, I really do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, wish you all the health and happiness and success going forward. And, um, yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. Oh, man. Nice one. Good sign. All right. See you guys. See ya. Bye. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> Oh, that was good. Clap now. I don't know if you want another one that microphone. So, Steve-O. Yes. Lucky last Australiana. Oh, good. Mate, and it's a shame because, I as I said, Keegan, thank you for this book, but one of the things we didn't do is we I didn't get all the way through to Z. <laughs> and I'm up taking to this D. book with me, so you can't have it. So We're only up to D, though. We're only up to D. But, uh, Steve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip to P. Right, because I kind of will look through and I, and I, and I just I love, thought of a D one. I love these. I love these things. So, um, all right, well, you go for D and then I'll go to P. All right. All right. What's your D? Drongo. Wow. This What's is it? interesting. Yeah. Because I was talking to Tony the other day about my dead, d- as dry as a dead dingo's donger. <laughs> and, and it's funny because what you just say it's really dry. But no, Australians have to make this huge saying out of it. But yes, Drongo, or what, is that what you said, Drongo? Drongo, yeah. yeah. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because Australians are terrible the way they speak. They they, they usually try and let you guess what's going on, but they tell you what it's not. Like, yeah. Like, I love that, Carl Barron. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. He did a, He's he got did a great – if you look it up on YouTube, guys, it's, it's your – funny. Carl, Carl Barron, and it's – um, you know, and I've said this before as well too, but I love it. I just yeah. kill myself every time. It's like yeah. they'll tell you what it's not. Yeah. You know? Okay, I'm going to ask him some questions. Yeah. How far is the other factory? Oh, not far. All right. You know, how are you doing today? Oh, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when are we going? Not long now. Yeah. Yeah. How expensive was it? Oh, not much. <laughs> it's, it's exactly. It's, it's true, though. It, it is so bad. You know, my, Tony's father is so Australian, quintessentially Australian, oh, that he kind of like that. All right, yeah. you ready for the yep. P? Yep. All right. So, Steve, I'm yeah. going to say these ones. I've got my wrong glasses on, so you have to bear oh, with me, all right? Um, so I'm going to go for P, and then and then you tell me. Um, oh, actually, we'll even start with the one with a pig's ass. Uh, strong, <laughs> strong, strong, I love Australians. It's just so, so great. Um all right. Uh, okay. So uh, this this will you'll be flummoxed a little bit by this one, right? Okay. All right. Ready? So so one word, multiple sayings, or multiple uses. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Piss. Oh, that's got loads. Okay. So go, go with the first one you think of. Alcohol. Okay. That's the second one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what right. else? Urinate. Uh, piss. Yeah. Urinate. Um, Alcohol. Yep. Yeah. Piss and wind. Which means you 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 you. You're doing something, but it's not going to get anywhere. Yeah, no substance. Yeah. Yep. Uh, piss in my pocket. Well, that means you're flattering someone. Yep. Um, uh, piss it in. It means you're going to do it easily. Yeah. Uh, piss take. It means you're having fun at someone's expense. Yeah. Piss on. Oh, piss on means we're going to start drinking. Uh, mm, no. No? Um, it means defeat with disaster. They pissed on us. Oh, pissed on us. Yeah, yeah of they pissed yeah. on us, mate. Yeah. Yep. Uh, piss up. Oh, that, that, that's an alcoholic um, drinking session. Yep. Uh, yeah, piss up at my place, mate. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because it also says, also piss on. So you were oh, kind of right. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it means you're going to get on the piss. Yep. And uh, 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 pissed off. Oh, it means you're upset. And uh, finally, geez, so uh, a pisser. A pisser means it's a, a good one. A funny. A funny one. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. Uh, it's what, a lot uh, to do with piss. Can, right? I, can, I, can I give you another piss, though? Yeah. What, what about a piss take? Yeah, ma- ma- make fun make of someone. Make fun of. That's, yeah. they, that, that's one I knew that they didn't know. Oh, oh no, I just missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah
That's it, Steve. O. Steve, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna keep this. Oh, so, no, 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 I'm keeping, I'm keeping my Australian, you know, pr- proudly of, printed in in China. Yep. I so, know all those, but I don't know them all. It's great, you know. Yeah, absolutely love it. As I said, oh, probably wow. my most prized possession. Key can give this to me, that and he is, gave it to me, Steve, not you. That's awesome. All right, all right, all right guys. So, Steve, O. yes, we're gonna leave on a high. Of course, right? we are. So, if people have listened this long, we've got a little. Easter egg, a little nugget for you. Because it's funny, I was talking to the team and I said, you know what, it's going to be a sad day when I walk out the door. Um, you know, why don't we create a song like the, the gut right song, right? Yeah, I mean, I love the music. Down, anyway, yeah. I had an idea, Steve, yeah. an ode to myself, if you like. Right. Right. Which is find the top 25 love songs, but take out the word love and change it for Jeff. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. What, what could go wrong? Yeah, well, what could go wrong? All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll start at 25 and I'll, and I'll go up. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, your Jeff keeps lifting me higher and higher. <laughs> your love this keeps lifting me That's yeah. it. Yeah, if you yeah. can sing them. You sing them, all right? Oh, I'm not all right. singing uh, them all. Um, that's How Strong My Jeff Is by Otis Redding. Do you know that one? No, I don't know. I know Otis Redding sitting on right. the dock of the bay. Uh, Adele, Make You Feel My Jeff. <laughs> mm. oh, yeah, I don't think I should sing that one. We boot it off. Um, wet, wet, wet. Yeah, uh, Jeff is all around. <laughs> from Love that, uh, is all around. That's it. That from what movie? Can you remember? Uh, Love actually. Love actually, that's yeah, it. Yep. Was, yeah. Um, Bee Gees. Yep. How deep is your Jeff? <laughs> How deep is your love? Is your love? You got to say Jeff. Deep. You can't say love. Oh, okay. Sorry, yep. I've got the word um, wrong. Oh, this one's a modern one. Rihanna. Yeah, we found Jeff. I don't know that one, but we found him. Uh, I don't know that one. All right. Uh, so Wings. Do you know who yeah, Wings, Wings is? Yeah, Paul McCartney. Partly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, silly Jeff songs. Had enough of silly Jeff songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, don't worry about that one. All yeah. right. Let's just keep going. All right. Uh, I don't know this one. Leona Lewis, Bleeding Jeff. Uh, the Queen, Crazy Little Thing Called Jeff. Oh, I know that one. Uh, Mariah Carey. Yep. Jeff Takes Time. Uh, wow. Roxette. Yep. Must have been Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been Jeff. Uh, yeah. Mariah Carey, Vision of Jeff. Oh, uh, Eminem, Jeff, the way you lie. Uh, Captain and Tennille, oh. Jeff will keep us together. Oh, that's like a that. great song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andy Gibb, and a lot of people would agree with this one. Jeff is thicker than water. <laughs> uh, Tina Turner, what's, what's Jeff, Jeff got, got to do, to do with, with it? it? I knew it would be that one. Uh, foreigner. I want to know what Jeff is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, UB40. Yep. Can't help falling in Jeff. <laughs> Diana Ross. Jeff Hangover. Whitney Ooh. Houston. Greatest Jeff of all. Jeff of all. Oh, um, yes. uh, Celine Dion. Uh, the power of Jeff. Of course. Which is a little bit like Huey Lewis. That's the power of Jeff. Yeah, it's the yeah. power of Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Janet Jackson. That's the way Jeff goes. Oh. Madonna. Yep. Justify my Jeff. <laughs> Uh, Herb Alpine, uh, that guy's in Jeff with you. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. That word, Herb okay. Elliott, oh, Alpert. I don't know that oh, one. Oh, okay. There you uh, go. That, this guy's in Jeff with you. What does that mean? Wow. And lastly, and yep. probably, I say, one of the best, the Righteous Brothers, you've lost that Jeff and Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And there you have. That's yep. it. That, that, is, that is it. And that's anyway, a crazy old thing called Jeff. T, uh, who works for us, she goes, you've got to do Snoop Dogg. Uh, was it, no, uh, Shaggy. Shaggy. Uh, Mr. Jeff or Jeffer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Boba Loba. Loba. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, anyway, a bit, bit, of, a, bit of a laugh that's to, funny. to end it. I, I had a lot of One fun. One word changes together, a lot of things, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? But I think it just helps you understand the power of Jeff, of course. Yeah. You know, the power of Jeff will keep us together. <laughs> so, um, in fact, you know, and, you know, what is it? Jeff will never tear us apart? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Says, yeah. Yes. That's right. No, that's never tear us apart. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff will never tear us apart. That's right. Unless I leave, which I am. Oh. So, um, anyway, all right, mate. We've already said our goodbyes, but yeah, appreciate it, guys. It's been a lot of fun. All right, take See care. Ya.